We don't always pay attention to our environment until our environment pays attention to us. I first realized this one warm October evening in 2003. My family and I are heading home from Disneyland, the happiest place on earth. My little sisters are sitting in the back seat goofing around. My brother and I are reading some of our favorite books. It's gradually growing darker outside, nearly pitch black, when suddenly the sky starts to glow. I look out the window and flames are streaking across the hills. For miles as we drive, these fires continue and intensify, so close to homes and communities, places that are supposed to be safe. Yet here they are with flames at their doorsteps. I had no idea our environment could turn so threatening. After the fires burned, as I'm helping friends sort through the charred remains of their homes, I'm feeling devastated at the loss around me. Grateful that my family and our home are safe, but shocked that this could happen at all. Experts on the news had predicted this. These massive fires that could break backcountry barriers and invade our cities. They knew this was a possibility long before it happened and had warned us. We knew it was coming, and we hadn't prepared. This is only one example of the growing instability of our environment. Every year, storms arrive more frequently and with greater intensity. Oceans are warmer, feeding more fuel to these storms. Rising sea levels contribute to destructive flooding, coastal erosion, saltwater intrusion in our freshwater aquifers. As these drinking water supplies are threatened, droughts are further aggravating resources. Temperatures continue to rise, exacerbating droughts and heat waves. Our environmental security is threatened. Globally, we are more connected to every environmental threat. A drought in one area can mean famine in another. Diseases spread further and faster as climates warm, allowing insects to invade new territories. Just this year, a pair of heat waves killed thousands across Europe. Extreme heat not only threatens lives, but damages roads, rail lines, airport operations, infrastructure that transports people, food, and goods around the world to places that need it. The survival rule of three is that we can survive for three weeks without food, three days without water, three hours without shelter, three minutes without air. Food, water, shelter are human survival priorities, and when these are threatened, we react. We instinctively fight for survival when these basic needs aren't met. The greatest threat to global stability is our lack of environmental security. Many of us are lucky. We can turn on the tap and clean water comes out. We go to the store and buy food. If it's too hot or cold, we turn on a fan or a heater. But for how much longer? Already, major industrialized cities around the world are running out of drinkable water. Countries threaten each other over the same water supplies used for drinking water in one area and food or energy production in another. According to worldwater.org, over 450 notable conflicts have occurred over water this decade. Environmental security is viability for life. All human activity depends on natural support systems. Clean air, shelter, water, food, energy. When these resources are threatened, it disrupts the fabric of our society, our cultural, social, political, economic systems, in turn exacerbating poverty, hunger, crime, mass migration, nationalism, religious extremism, as well as our ability to respond to these threats and rebalance these systems. I'm an engineer for the Department of Defense. I work at Naval Facilities Engineering and Expeditionary Warfare Center. I've been fortunate to travel around the world to work with US and international militaries and engineers to improve environmental security. One of the best parts of my job is probably the least well known to most people, that the DOD provides environmental security assistance for humanitarian purposes, but also to promote regional stability. We typically think of security as big, powerful ships, aircrafts, tanks, weapons, not building sustainable infrastructure or protecting natural resources. 
but by furthering environmental security, the DOD can proactively prevent regional conflict. Our troops don't just roll in and drop bombs to destroy the bad guys. Often they roll in and make things better. More stable power, safer buildings, clean water, reliable infrastructure. By assisting our partner nations to develop resilience, we undermine hostile organizations that target any and all vulnerabilities. In 2016, I supported the United States Pacific Command in coordinating an environmental security workshop in Kota Kinabalu, Malaysia, for over 10 countries in the region. During this workshop, we discussed regional environmental security issues. For example, fish bombing. Yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's an extremely destructive, illegal form of fishing that indiscriminately kills any fish or animals caught in the blast radius. While it's a quick and easy method to provide some food or income for fishermen, it's inefficient and short-sighted. Most fish stunned or killed by the blast end up sinking to the seafloor rather than floating to the surface for harvest. It destroys coral ecosystems, ultimately leading to less fish and other aquatic life that we depend on. The bombs often injure or kill fishermen or even innocent bystanders. And these fish bombs create a security issue, as stockpiles present an opportunity for violent extremist organizations. Imagine living in a country with all these environmental stressors, and now your neighbors are building bombs in order to fish or make some money. What happens when that stops working? Same stressors, now more opportunities for conflict and violence which is exactly what's happening. Terrorist groups are exploiting resource scarcities and natural disasters to further recruiting efforts. A decade ago, an extended drought in the Middle East contributed to the Syrian civil war and facilitated the rise of terrorist groups, including ISIS. As crops and livestock were devastated by these droughts, widespread poverty, coupled with a lack of economic alternatives, swelled the ranks of militant groups offering incentives for fighters. Similar stressors are causing a domino effect around the world. In 2011, droughts in Russia and China contributed to global wheat shortages, raising food prices in northern Africa, which then catalyzed regional uprisings. In northern Mali, desertification and food insecurity has enabled al-Qaeda to move in and take control. And in Central Africa, widespread drought and food shortages has provided an ideal recruiting environment for Boko Haram. Many once coexistent relationships between peoples of all ethnic and cultural backgrounds have become divided as environmental threats aggravate minor grievances into widespread conflict. Environmental insecurity alone does not cause these conflicts, but acts as a threat multiplier, compounding and intensifying other factors that, when left unchecked, tip the scales towards conflict and instability. Even as our military is ordered to fight and win these increasingly complex conflicts, we call on them to respond to natural disasters and humanitarian crises around the world. From battling wildfires to rescue missions to delivering supplies, we rely on our military to be quick and capable and responsive everywhere at a moment's notice. Yet the combination of traditional conflicts with environmental security threats has limited their ability to respond. During Hurricane Katrina, several National Guard troops and helicopters were not available for rescue or disaster relief, as they were already deployed overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan. Tyndall Air Force Base is still recovering from Hurricane Michael, which damaged or destroyed nearly every building on base. And last year, wildfires caused evacuations at military installations across California. As incredible as our military forces are, calling on them should be a last resort. We need to shift the focus to preparedness and resiliency, or environmental insecurity will continue to directly threaten our survival, indirectly spawn conflict and instability, and impede our ability to respond to these threats. The same global connectivity that's exacerbating these problems can also be leveraged to generate solutions. 
In 2017, I went back to Malaysia and we put together another environmental security workshop, this time moving beyond awareness of the issues into action. A few days into the workshop, after sharing resources to identify fish bombers, the Malaysian military used these resources to catch several ships from a major fish bombing ring. Environmental security is key to preventing and resolving conflict. Imagine a world where environmental security is one of the principal objectives of our national security strategy. The military is at the forefront for improving environmental security so that we aren't continually engaged in global conflict. And open innovation and technology transfer builds up resiliency in areas most at risk. So what can each of us do to get there? Pay attention, adapt now, and take action. Pay attention to our environmental security. Where is our water coming from? How is it protected? Our food? Climate threats. It's easy to become paralyzed or feel hopeless with projections of climate apocalypse fighting against utter denial. But it's not toxic doomsday rhetoric or apathy. Be curious and mindful. Look into how our lifestyles are feeding environmental security threats and find ways to starve those threats. Adapt now. Become more resilient. The survival rule of threes is about prioritizing your response to the survival situation you're in. Wildfires, flooding, earthquakes, extreme weather. Our environmental security should not be taken for granted. Do not plan to be a victim. Prepare to help each other. Take action. Each step we take will add up and make a difference, like reducing our personal waste or planting a tree. But keep asking, what else can each of us do? By holding ourselves accountable, together we can attack larger challenges. Reducing our energy consumption, shifting investments from fossil fuels to renewable energies, pushing harder for sensible climate policies, showing commercial industries, tech companies, governments, investors that we want a more environmentally secure future now. And we need more options to get us there. Be innovative and find new solutions to environmental security threats. You might come up with an idea that no one else has considered. This is possibly the greatest opportunity of our time to make a meaningful impact. By improving environmental security, together we disrupt conflict and instability, weaken violent extremist organizations, reduce hazards from environmental threats, and save ourselves instead of waiting to be rescued. When we pay attention, adapt now, and take action, then we become the threat multiplier to forge a better world. And kids heading home from the happiest place on Earth won't have to watch their world on fire. Thank you. Thank you.